Hello and welcome, I'm Erin Cuthbert, footballer for Chelsea and the Scotland national team and you're listening to the Blue Day podcast. Welcome back, my friends, to the podcast that never ends. Yes, this is the Blue Day podcast, and for Chelsea fans everywhere, every day is a Blue Day. I am your host and creator, Keith Lawrence, and this summer, the Blue Day podcast has been on a world tour, talking to different Chelsea supporters' clubs, and this episode is our last destination, our last stop, and what a country to finish on. Joining me this week is Lee Filler of the Winnipeg Supporters Club. Lee? I hope I said your surname right. If I didn't, I apologise. Welcome to the podcast, and how are you? Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, last names are always an issue. Last name is, so I'm Lee Failer, Germanic last name. there you go. Yeah, 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 Germanic last name. Bit of a Bellic fan, but we can get into that later. But yeah, I'm doing (laughs) all right, Keith. Thanks for having me on the show. Excited to, uh, to be this last stop on your world tour. Well, it's it's been good. I know we've sort of seen touched bases sort of beforehand as well. So when then we were sort of trying to figure out a date to, to come on, but it's good to sort of talk to you now because there's there's been certain games that have happened with Chelsea recently <laughs> that we might touch up on later in the show. But to start it off, Lee, when did you become a Chelsea supporter? What was it that you saw? whether it was on TV or whether you saw something elsewhere that made you decide to become a Chelsea supporter? Yeah, yeah. So I started playing football or soccer, unfortunately, as uh, as we call it here in Canada. Uh, I refer to it as football, so I'll do my best to keep that uh, term in the show. Good but yeah, man, I started, well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I started playing football in high school, grade 10. Um, and so, you know, we were we were not very good. I grew up in a small town just outside of the city of Winnipeg here. And... Uh, so my coach said, you got to watch them. You got to watch football to learn how to play the game. So you got to watch your Premier League. So we started watch. I started watching the Premier League then. So um, that was around 1999. And uh, yeah, I was a pretty soft Premier League fan for the next few years. But, uh, you know, these were the times of, you know, Arsenal were, were, were so great with Thierry, Thierry, Henry, uh, Thierry Henry and uh, mm. uh, Man United, of course. Everybody was a Man United fan, and, and my best friend was a Man United fan. But none of those teams appealed to me for some reason. And uh, so over the years, I remember watching watching Chelsea. And Eider Good Johnson, for some reason, was one of my favorite players at the time. I, I don't know if you remember him back in those days, but... I don't know. I just I just love the partnership that he had with Chelsea in, in some of those early years. And uh, I gradually became more and more of a Chelsea fan through through those years. And of course, um, once the Premier League winning uh, years came in, uh, oh, I was hooked at that point. I don't think I ever missed a game. You know, we're six, we're six hours uh I guess behind you folks, right? So uh it's always early mornings and uh I worked uh yeah, I worked in a restaurant and I remember staying up all night watching just to watch the Premier League game at 6 a.m. If we had those early kickoffs, I'd close close at the pub around two. And uh, uh, yeah, I, but those early years uh, of, of the last, uh, I guess, two decades ago now were, were kind of where I started getting hooked onto Chelsea. So you would have hated it when Chelsea were playing at half 12 lunchtime UK time. Oh. That- I still hate it now. I'm not. I'm not a morning person. So we got to wake up at six to watch Premier League games. You know, it better be a big, uh, big derby, or, or, or I might not be waking up. <laughs> <laughs> or just have it on record if you can. Maybe. Yeah, well, <laughs> thankfully with our streaming services now, you can re- rewatch these matches later, which is great. But um, yeah, we still watch most of them uh, with the with the supporters club, and maybe we'll get into that in a few questions later. Yes, yes, we will do. In regards to yourself, though, as a avid Chelsea supporter, what would you say while watching it over there in Canada, Canada. would be your number one moment as a Chelsea fan? Ooh, number one moment. Well, I think there's some easy ones, right? Uh, <laughs> 2012 Champions League was pretty amazing. 
2021 was was pretty good, although it um, in Canada or here in Winnipeg. We are in lockdown. I was listening to some of your other shows with the Atlanta supporters clubs, and he was talking about how he went to the pub to watch it. We we were hardly allowed to leave our houses, so unfortunately, we really had to. We watched it on Zoom. It was great, but you didn't get that camaraderie you've had from some of the other years. One of my I don't one of my greatest memories I'd say though was the 0-9-10 uh, season. Didier Drogba and Nicholas Nicholas and Elka. It was such a fun year. They were bagging goals left and right. Um, it was just such a fun club to watch. That was an that awesome season. team. That back yes. then. that was a, Carlos' yeah. first season there. It was a cup double with the FA Cup, and yeah. oh, that that one stuck out of me uh, in my memory to this day. It was just just a fun team to watch. And we we had an awesome squad, you know. And even when you have had players on the bench that would come on and affect games, like Joe Cole and Michael Ballack, you even had yes. players like Belletti and Deco. Oh God, <laughs> yes, you know, natural born players to win trophies and great time to support Chelsea at that time when we was winning four or five nil against sides that you'd be like, my God, we're playing excellent football. And yeah, Carlo yeah. Ancelotti, superb manager for Chelsea at that time. Yeah, yeah, he had that great year there. And yeah, they were just a lot of fun. And, you know, we deserved it. We'd had some tough years earlier, you know, 7 08. I think we were run, runner up in every competition that I remember. And then 08 09 was a bit of a. 08 was a bad year. Don't worry. Yeah. 08 was a bad year. That was a bad year to support Chelsea. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So. But we've made but, up yeah. for it since, though. Oh, yes. It's, it's, we've had, we've had a couple of good decades. I mean, under, um, Abramovich, I mean, so many trophies, and excited to see what this new uh, this new era of uh, Chelsea Football Club is going to is going to look like. Well, we we shall see. We shall see what Todd yep. uh, has planned and his cohorts have got planned. But you've talked about you know the significant moments of you supporting Chelsea. Who would you say has been the best player that you've seen play for Chelsea? Well. Oh. Well, I mean, because I've only been a fan the last two decades, although arguably some of the greatest players of uh, of our club's history, I, I, I mean, the easy ones were uh, were Didier Drogba and Frank Lampard. I mean, at their best, uh, particularly about in the 2010 season, right? Oh, they were just fun to watch. I mean, two players, goals out of nothing, right? And um, uh, so obviously those are two easy ones. Uh, I also enjoyed Balak, though. I mean, he was always a personal oh, favorite. yeah. Not yeah. not not big on the statistics sheet, but you know he impacted games so much. Michael Essien was another favorite, yeah. and uh, you know what I'm throwing. How, how many how many are you allowed to pick here, right? But Claude Makélélé, when I started, he was one of the <laughs> players also that inspired me to to love Chelsea. I just you know the fun name. He was all over the field, um, locking down teams. He was just he was a they fun named player the for me to watch. After him. He was that exactly good. exactly. How can you not love the guy? And, yeah, we've been trying to replicate him ever since, and I think Conte's done a good job in the in the new form of uh, a Makélélé role. That's true. That's true. Although Conte's at the moment start, starting to pick up injuries <sighs> more often than not, which is a little bit of a issue. But we'll we'll touch on the modern day Chelsea later. Liam, now I want to sort of discuss the Winnipeg Supporters Club, if I can. How did it start, and what was the reasonings behind forming the club? Yeah, well, I mean, so I, I jumped into the club, you know, shortly after the Champions League. Um, I, I grew up in a small town, so I had to watch that 2012 Champions League at the, at the British pub I worked at. Uh, I watched it basically with a Manchester United fan who was a good friend of mine. So I was on my own, and I said, what the hell am I doing watching these games on my own? I mean, so I looked on Facebook. There was nothing. I created a group. And uh, a bunch of people started to join. So there was already an existing club just that I, I wasn't aware of. Right. Uh, so they had been watching games for some time. I think many of the supporters, um, you know, there's some, um, you know, some uh, home nations fans. You know, we have some English fans who've been fans their whole life, right, and then moved out to Canada. So there's been a club, or at least people watching Chelsea, at some of the uh, uh, football-related um, pubs in our city the last three decades for sure. Um, we kicked off the, you know, this online supporters club uh, with the fifth stand, which has been such a great asset, I think, um, at least for us to bring uh, to bring members into the club. I think we started it whenever it kind of whenever it kind of kicked off, maybe around 2015 or 2016. 
we're we're a small club by Canadian terms. I mean, the big ones here are Toronto, Vancouver. Some of our members have gone to um, to their watch parties. It's a whole uh, All right. it's a whole it's a whole event, right? Whereas uh, we kind of share pubs here with other other supporters clubs, right? There's generally four or five of us out for a game, but um, in terms of the forming of the club, yeah, that started really with the fifth stand aft, and we thought, oh hey, what the hell, we can do this. Um, because uh, they changed, um, they changed the qualification process, right? Where you needed so and so many members. I forget what it was prior to prior to us kicking off, but once they opened it up to you know join with twenty members, uh, we've been growing since then, and uh, we're trying to hit the hundred uh, hundred member mark at least on the fifth stand aft, and I think we'll get there over the next year or two, and that opens up some more um, membership rewards for the club too. Well, that'd be great as well, and as you say, you've got the ambition to to get new members and it'll be great for you guys because then it'll be bringing more memories too as yourself with the Chelsea supporters and watching games together was did you have any particular backlash say backlash did you have any particular drawbacks from forming the group did it take a long time for you or did it take a long time for you and others to get together and then watch games or was it quite an easy process to sort out? Yeah, I, I think it was pretty easy. I mean, there were some members who've been around for a while and doing Chelsea related activities. Um, uh, you know, uh, we don't necessarily have a leader in this organization, but, you know, I'm thinking some of the original guys and there was always, uh, we always do a founders dinner every year in March uh, based on the club's founding date. Uh, so that was always really popular. So there's always been this the, the the love of Chelsea in this city, uh, members getting together, and I think it was really easy. What the, what the fifth stand up or what the supporters club has really done is just made it more public about hey, there's Chelsea fans here because we'll post hey, we're watching the game at you know we have two local pubs where we that are kind of our home pubs. Hey, we're going to be watching the, the club at um, the Grove, which is one of our, our our pubs, and people will show up. And I didn't know there was other Chelsea fans in the city. This is so awesome, right? So we get people coming in, and and the growth is really easy that way. So uh, it's just fun to see how how that that organic growth can happen through what the club has given us with the fifth stand. Now, in your town and with your supporters club, what would a typical match day be like? Now, would it be a case of getting to the pub early? trying to you know if if you if you have of course put like banners up or flags up what trying to get the crowd going do you have like certain clubs that i've spoken to sometimes lay on food or the pub will obviously lay on some bits while the game's going on what what do you guys do is it just a case of a few guys just kept having beers or is there a bit, bit more to it than that yeah for us it's it's probably for each match day It'll just be a few guys, guys and get, uh, girls uh, getting together and watching the game um, at, at our pub. As I mentioned before, we have six hour difference. So it's sometimes tough to find. Um, it's been tough. I think the hardest part is finding a pub that will open up early enough for you, right? If we have an 8 a.m. kickoff or the 6 a.m. kickoff, uh, not every pub's going to open up. So we have we found a, a place now that, you know, he's he's pretty good with us. If we text him, hey, there's we got four guys showing up. Would you open your, your pub for us? He'll do it now. So. Uh, that's great uh, that we have that. But yeah, each match day, you know, there's generally about, I would say, four to five of us. And as I mentioned earlier, we, we share the we share the the um, the pubs with other supporters and uh, 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 different clubs. So there's a lot of banter back and forth, with kind of, uh, which kind of makes the games a little more interesting. Uh, I guess you got Is a little away. Is it friendly banter, or does it sometimes get a little bit personal, a bit nicky, well, depending on who you played? Yeah, it's mostly friendly, friendly, but it can get a bit niggly. I know some of the FA Cup finals has been uh, there's where, especially with us, uh, you know, not having a good record at Wembley lately. Oh yeah, yeah, got, no. the, the yeah. About that, the better, yeah. Yeah, I know, I can right? See where that's going now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it can get a little bit niggly, but for the most part, it's friendly banter. Um, yeah, we we have a good time, and uh, we look forward to getting out getting out there each week and um it's a little harder now in summer a lot of people away on vacation but i think in the fall we'll, we'll start having more people but um our club is a bit different in toronto and vancouver i know they have full pubs right uh 
50 people, 20 people for each match, right? So uh, it's a little different here. It's definitely that small uh, small city vibe in Winnipeg. But um, yeah, we have a great time each week at the pub. And yes, we have our flags. We're all decked out in our kits. Um, yeah, those who love their away kits and those who love the blue kits. And <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, fun. if it's a small crowd, it means there's more beer to drink. That's one good yeah. way to think about it. Yes, yeah, definitely. We have to wait till I think eleven o'clock to legally drink here in Manitoba. So uh, <laughs> we usually start really? off with coffee. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we wait till about eleven. Yeah, so it's usually coffee and tea until the until the government lets us drink. <laughs> very different. Very different from what isn't it's it? Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My special we might put a little bit of rum in the tea, maybe. Just like a little... Yeah, maybe maybe we can sneak in a flask and uh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in regards to obviously with your supporters group, you mentioned earlier about the numbers that you want in twelve months time. But what would you say for you and your other cohorts in, in your club, what would be the overall ambition? What would you what would be the ultimate goal for the Winnipeg Blues. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I I think you know the more people you have, the more fun it is, right? So we, we you know we'd love to see that growth. Um, you know, we have lots of new active members. Um, uh, you know, it would be fun to see all of that just 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 keep continuing to grow. Um, I know once we reach the the hundred members, there's some more added um, you know benefits and and prizes and gifts and things for for supporters. Um, you know. I, I will say I I have not been to Stanford Bridge, but most of our members have. So I would say uh, some things we've talked about lately are, are uh, trying to find a date that some of us at least are can can all go out to Stanford Bridge and 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 you know go together and kind of make a trip out of it. And I think that's part of the part of the growth plans too. So hopefully that all comes together. And if it does, I mean, a bit different from people like myself who are only a stones far away from the bridge how much planning does that take you know because again you being in overseas you've got to look at the hotels you've got to look at you know get how long you've got families as well to consider and <laughs> if it's me i wouldn't take my family over to just to watch football I'd, I'd leave them here but obviously please certain people are different yeah what sort of barriers are there for you when you sort of try to make plans before but haven't come up with anything yeah I, I mean costs are always costs are always the biggest uh biggest issue in terms of that uh, just getting over to london uh, it's relatively simple but yeah i mean there's costs involved with it um yeah we we will definitely go within the next couple of years that's for sure but you know i i won't be my wife wouldn't let me live if i if i uh went to the uk and i left her here all alone so i definitely have to take her along she's not she's not a football fan but you know she is by proxy right so uh yeah you know it, there there would be a lot of planning just in making it happen but many members of our, our, our group have gone generally you know on their own or with their own families and um so it, it's it's doable um, and uh, it's been done and hope, but we want to do it as a group. So um, I'm sure there'll be three or four of us in the next couple of years. Ah, superb. I was going to say, if it is with you and your wife, make sure if you take your wife, take her to the theatre afterwards. Do Chelsea okay, <laughs> there you go. The, there you go. You got well, you got to weigh things up. She, she'll appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but although you haven't been to Stamford Bridge and you said, you know, your fellow club members have is it something whereby would you feel if you went to the bridge yourself and others where you could maybe speak to the Toronto guys and obviously meet up at Chelsea and then again try and spread the word out about your club is that something that maybe you you guys could look to do because I know there's other clubs that have met outside the ground from different countries and it's a case of you know they're trying to spread the word out that who they are for example yeah of course i mean i i think we'd love to link up with other clubs um i mean i mean that's just part i mean that's what's so great about being a chelsea fan right i mean uh, it is a world language right uh so um no matter where you are in the world right um 
Uh, if you say you're a Chelsea fan, there's there's going to be other Chelsea fans there, right? And you'll have that to connect with. And, uh, you know, if we go to London to connect with other groups, local groups or great people like yourself, I mean, that, that's just part of the fun and the camaraderie of what being a Chelsea fan is. So uh, I wouldn't say it's more about spreading the, the name of our, our our group or supporters club, but just connecting with this this big global family of Chelsea fans and having a hell of a good day watching the, watching the the club we love. Now, since you've been involved with the club, have you had much contact from Chelsea Football Club in terms of you know trying to get the Winnipeg Blues you know more over, for example? Have you had much luck with trying to arrange certain days or merchandise that has been sort of come over to your club at all? Yes. So we haven't had the merchandise yet. That'll kick in at 100 supporters. But, um, you know, communication's a bit slow with them. They have all these clubs around the world and they do their best to keep up with us. Um, certainly, we, we, you know, we keep uh, in touch with them and reminding us of, uh, of who we are and what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we've got the official c- certificate. Uh, so we've got the, we've got that framed, uh, you know, enshrining our, our, our club's fandom, I guess you can say. Um, but yeah, I mean, the club's been great. Um, I know there, I know there, um, uh, the fifth stand is down right now on the app. I think they're doing some, uh, some upgrades to the changes. Of course, last year was pretty tumultuous, so they, they've had to do it now. Um, so looking forward to see what the, what the new app will look like, but no, the club's been pretty good to us. And, um, you know, as we keep growing and, and hitting that hundred mark, I think, uh, we'll, we'll see some more merch coming our way and, um, yeah, you know, uh, hopefully building some loyalty points and things like that as we go back that way too. So. That'd be great. That'd be superb. And hopefully one day, as you say, once you get that 100 and you do eventually grow, there might be chances of you guys getting tickets through yes that particular avenue that'd be superb yes if anybody uh, is listening to this that is in the area of a winnipeg that has probably not i'm assuming they have heard of it but if there's anybody that would like to join your supporters club how would they go about it yes yes most important of all hey yeah jump we jump on our facebook we have a, a group there uh chelsea uh, fc fan club of winnipeg Facebook's the best way to get a hold of us. Um, and also just once the, uh, the fifth stand is up, um, messaging us on there. I know they have a chat function. That's a good way to, to figure out. We've, we've got a few members that way. Uh, Facebook is the best, although I know lots of people are kind of cutting their Facebook out. So we have some like text message groups and WhatsApp groups to message those people who aren't online. Hey, we're going to be at this pub this day and that day. So, but look for us on Facebook. Probably the easiest way to get a hold of us or, um, uh, uh, yeah, it's probably the easiest way. And you guys have a Twitter account or Instagram account that people can contact, or is that yeah. still in the works? Still in the works. I mean, we haven't kicked off on Twitter or anything yet. We, I've certainly thought about it, but haven't talked to the rest of the group about it. Right. I know, I know we got lots of people involved. Hopefully there'll be somebody. I don't know. I don't use Twitter that much, uh, aside from looking at uh, some of the things that are going on. So, yeah. Okay. Now, we did say at the top of the show, we probably talk about... Uh, today's Chelsea and what's, what's been happening lately. Obviously, one thing that's really bothered Chelsea fans was what happened last Sunday against Tottenham at the bridge. I covered it with one of the uh, other supporters clubs. Recently, we talked about the Battle of the Bridge Part 2. I wasn't there. I was I was preoccupied. But obviously, you. I'm assuming you watched it. Yep. What was your take on it? The football, <laughs> the first lead of football, and then we'll talk about the the calls. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we we watched the uh, the battle against uh, Spurs at home, and uh, I, 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 from a Chelsea footballing perspective, I mean, we played great. Um, I would say maybe is a little bit nervous going into the season. Uh, you know, can we, you know, given the some of the outgoing players and some of the turmoil in the off season, are, are we going to be able to uh, keep playing our style of football? We we look so good, right? The Everton game was a little bit sleepy. Nick the one nil win there. We really look good. Um, when we when we gave up the first goal, <laughs> I, I was pretty sure we were going to score another one, and and that James goal was just brilliant. So it was really, you know, going you know going forward, I, I'm feeling pretty confident about this Chelsea club that um, you know we will be uh, for sure, you know, within the top four. Who knows? Maybe we'll knock on uh, on the top top two there with uh, Liverpool and Man City, but. Um, 
we look really good when the football look great. And, um, you know, if, if players like Conte can keep their hamstrings healthy and the, and the club stays healthy, I, I, you know, I, the football looks great. And I'm really excited for the season. Have you been impressed with the signings this summer? Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly. I mean, it's been hard, right? I, I don't think we filled every hole. There's a lot of holes still on this club. Um, somebody to actually reliably put in goals, I think, is is, is something everybody would talk about. It, it hurts to lose Rudiger, especially for a match like last week. I feel like he would have been in the middle of all of that. Uh, <laughs> he was always a master of the dark arts, but an, a good center back would be nice. Well, we um, know his hair would not have been pulled for a start. So. No, no, <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. It sounds like Fofana might come in. So, sounds like a lot of money for him, but we'll yeah. see if it happens and if it's worth it. But uh, I'm, I've been impressed with Bully, though, right? Um, he's committed to the club. He's spending. So so that's good to know as well that, um, you know, we don't have somebody like the Glazers coming in to take over this club, right? <laughs> What's your mouth at? Don't talk about them lot. Poor blood yeah. on this show. Well, yeah, well, yeah, mostly, yeah, yeah. Mostly, mostly we do laugh about them, to be honest, after what happened well, last week. But Well, that's the only reason I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will talk about the incidents that happened now. There a lot of people uh, still frothing at the mouth, and then you've got certain, certain people defending VAR, the people behind VAR, and the referee. Um, yeah. What was your take on it, watching it live? I mean, I was stunned. And then obviously when Spurs scored the equaliser, I I didn't know what to say, to be honest. Yeah. For me, and I said this on our last show, I thought our defending could have been better. And we have, in the past, conceded late goals in injury time that has cost us massively and that felt obviously with the decision that wasn't made I thought has also affected the team but what was your take on the ludicrous non-decision of that snake of a referee right right well I I think we were all appalled at all of the decisions uh watching it here in our pub uh I think we had four of us out for that game and uh it was just I mean the foul first of all I mean totally kicks his leg out I mean very so bad and then of course you just knew they were going to go the other way and score uh Jorginho can't get the ball out of the 18 yard box and uh I forget which uh, to back flick it yeah yeah (laughs) I know I know just get it out but um yeah I mean I guess it is classic Chelsea right that um yeah we we can't we, we can't defend that last minute goal um you know the hair was pulled uh, I know Dean has apologized. Well, thanks for nothing, right? But um, yeah, he, he can stick it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've said that I, I on mean, Twitter. I've, I've actually, I've met, I've messaged certain people. I've, yeah, because they obviously asked my, my views, and I've even said it to ex refs. He, he can stick it. Oh, absolutely. Doesn't mean, I mean a damn thing. His apology. Right, right, exactly. I and mean, somehow Dean and Taylor. I mean, they're they're always seem to be on the end of wrong decisions for Chelsea, right? I mean, it's. It's been so frustrating. Some of those FA Cup losses uh, to Arsenal, who we should never lose to, for the record. No, we shouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, w- w- with huge assistance from uh, poor officiating in uh, Premier League referees. I mean, whether it's corruption or what, I-, I think it's just just terrible, terrible refereeing uh, in the Premier League. I mean, it's just, it's just embarrassing. I-, I don't know how. We have VAR for a reason, right? And it should be able to correct simple decisions like these. And frustrating, but super frustrating. But there's still idiots in charge of VAR. VAR is okay, but there's still idiots behind. That's the problem. That's, That's the, the problem. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. It's been it's certainly been frustrating over the last year. Some of these decisions seems like so many have gone against us. I mean. Yeah, you don't want to think conspiracy, but certainly doesn't help when the call. Oh, that's too late. Keep or keep waiting to play wrong, right? That's too- <laughs> One person who's probably more pissed off than you and I put together, and thousands upon thousands of Chelsea supporters, was Mr. Thomas Tuchel. What's been your take on TT? Oh, how great is he? I mean, I mean, it probably recency bias always kicks in, but you know, he could be the best Chelsea manager ever. I mean. Uh, what's not Ooh. what's yeah, yeah what's not to love about him though right I mean you know where Mourinho was kind of this caustic kind of angry personality Thomas Tuchel I mean he's he's laughing about the events after um, certainly um, uh, you know uh, uh, deflecting from some of the some of the decisions that went against us 
but also just, I mean, I, I think the, 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 the decisions that he's made and the tactics that he's played, I mean, um, I, you know, I kind of questioned what Cheek was doing out there uh, as a wing back, and he looked great out there. I mean, Tommy T, he knows what he's doing. He's he gets the decisions right, I and mean, the tactics are great. He's fun to watch. Um, you love him. He loves the club. I, I, yeah, what's not to say about Thomas Tuchel? I, I, I I'm anxious to see where uh, where uh, he takes his club in the next few years. I'm, I, there's sure to be more trophies under under his leadership, and I hope he stays a lot longer than some uh, previous Chelsea managers have. Well, there's rumours that Todd is looking at extending his contract by another two years. I mean, that would be quite surprising because Chelsea managers don't normally last <laughs> that long. But to have him for another two years, it would be interesting. Um, just on a last topic of uh, Thomas Tuchel before we do wrap up, there are rumours at the moment that Chelsea are after Pierre Eric Abamingang. Can't believe I actually said that without uh, yeah, yeah. making a mess of that. <laughs> Former Arsenal striker, what are your thoughts on him and would you take him? Would I take it? Well, I think we need some help. Uh, we've uh, we've missed that super sub uh, to come on and score some goals for us. I, I don't know what TT's plans for for Oba, as TT calls him. <laughs> I don't know what his plans for, for Oba would be. I would accept him. I mean, I, we've had great players come from uh, Arsenal in the past, past, so we'll take some of their uh, some of their leftovers That's if true. it helps us. That's true. If it helps us, I don't mind that at all. But um, yeah, I mean, Barcelona they won twenty five million quid for him I mean I mean that's just that that's just ridiculous there's no way we should pay that for him I mean maybe that's what the market is now I just saw just saw something that maybe they've uh, lowered that asking price uh, in terms of Alonso going over there but I'd like to see him we we need some help up front Uh, there's not a lot of options at this at this part of time of the window and um, yeah I mean I mean it's certainly somewhere we have to build going forward but I'll take him yeah I'm I'm, I'm okay with it well we we, we shall see what develops between now and the end of the transfer window we've 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 certainly splashed the cash and hopefully the yes. Chelsea squad can progress and see what comes up and hopefully the next time we play Tottenham we put them to shame because they do get battered everywhere they go last question Lee and thank you again for coming on to the show I do appreciate it what does Chelsea Football Club mean to you and what's your predictions for this season Oh, Chelsea, uh, it means everything to me. I mean, since I've been a fan over the last 20 years, I mean, uh, you know, growing up in Canada, everything here is ice hockey, right? Ice hockey, ice hockey, ice hockey. But uh, I, I am an exception. Chelsea is the, the the one, you know, people always ask, what are your teams? There are no teams. There's only a team. Chelsea is my team, right? And I've grown to love this club so much. It is my passion. Uh, my wife knows where I'll be every game, and she's accepted that. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, just... no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Pause that for a minute. Pause that for a minute. You have said something that many blokes are aspiring to achieve in life. Their, their better half is accepted you watching football. Yes, How did you yeah. do it? How did you convince her that that would be the best practice? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just at the pub. She knows where I am. If I'm missing, I'm at the pub watching the Chelsea game. So yeah, I don't know if there's a magic, uh, magic instruction, but yeah, I mean, I, she knew what she was getting into when we got married. So I'll say that much. <laughs> the blue was everywhere all over our house. So uh, yeah, yeah, she knew. When we finish recording, I'm going to write the tips that you're going to tell me on how to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I need tips because that's superb. Yes, yes. But just to follow up on that in terms of where I see Chelsea ending this year, I mean, you know, top four is a must. And I I think it looks like we'll get there. Um, You know, I'm not going to celebrate it like Wenger, but, um, you know, I'd like to see us challenge for some cups. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, Liverpool and and Man City, they've done some wholesale changes. We'll see if it works out for them. I mean, if it doesn't, I mean, we could be knocking on the door there as well. So. Uh, but we got to score some goals, and that, that, that'll that determine uh, where we end up in the table. Lovely to end on some optimism. Fantastic. Lee, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Hopefully, this will not be the first time of you coming on to the show. It's been an absolute treat. Thank you very much. Hopefully, we'll see Chelsea win this weekend. Hopefully. <laughs> and hopefully, one day, you and the rest of the club can come to Stamford Bridge, and hopefully, we'll have one or a few good points to celebrate a Chelsea win. How's that? 
Absolutely, Keith. Yes, thanks for having me on the show. And um, when we are in London to watch the game, I'll make sure to look you up and we'll bring the club with you and we'll have a great time. Superb. Lee, all the best. You take it easy. Thanks so much, Keith. You too. Bye now. Go, go, go.